Who is ready for a physics problem? This guy right here. I'm ready. Okay, so this is finding the tension in a yo-yo. Uh, and so I'm going to I'm actually going to do it two ways. I'm going to first do this using uh, the Lagrangian and uh, force of constraint with Lagrange multipliers, and then I'm going to do it just using Newtonian physics. So, I mean, imagine, just so we clear right here, so this is like a yo-yo, which is actually just a coil of wire, but as, this is rolling down like that, okay, and so the, we're going to find the tension as that happens. So it has some, it's a disc, it's not an actual yo-yo, because -yo, uh, those have, you know, have an inner diameter. It's just a simple disk with a radius r and a mass m. So let's do this with force. We, we, in order to do this uh, and find the force of constraint, uh, we need to do the following. First, we need some function of x and y uh, equals zero. This is our uh, constraint equation. I'm not going to use x and y. Uh, and then we need to find the Lagrangian. Uh, and then we need to find, I'll just write down the Lagrangian in general for like, let's say x, it'd be the partial of L with respect to x plus lambda partial of f with respect to x equals the time derivative of the partial of L with respect to x dot, where L is equal to t minus u. And then I would do that for both coordinates in this case uh, to find lambda uh, partial of f with respect to x is my force of constraint. Okay, so there's a lot right there, uh, but I've already done a problem like this, and I'll link it down below. So in this, the, the first thing you want to think about is how many degrees of freedom do we have in this yo-yo? And the answer is one, right? There's only one degree of freedom. The ang you could say uh, the angle of rotation of the yo-yo completely defines the system. And if you do that, you can get an equation of motion for the yo-yo. However, you can't find the tension. So in order to find the constraint force, which is the tension, you need to have m more degrees of freedom than you would expect. So let's pick uh, two degrees of freedom and then we can constrain that down to one degree of freedom and find the force of constraint. So let's uh, pick this. I'm going to call this variable y. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking right now I'm going to call that s. <laughs> because I want to say this is at y equals zero. So that's the distance it's traveled, and then I'll call this the angle theta. So the first thing I want to do is to get the Lagrangian in terms of s and theta. In order to do that, I, um, well, I think we can go ahead and just do that right away. So let's say, uh, I'm just going to write it out. T is a kinetic energy, so it's going to be the kinetic energy of the center mass, which is one half m, and then the motion of the center mass is going to be uh, s dot squared. Is that okay? Now, I also have to add in the rotational kinetic energy of this, which is going to be 1 half i theta dot squared. The rotational kinetic energy is 1 half i omega squared. In this case, I'm using theta dot as the derivative of theta with respect to time, and that's the angular velocity. So if this is a disk, then i is equal to 1 half m r squared. So I'll put that in a second. And then the potential energy, this is potential of zero. This would be negative mgs, uh, but then I'm subtracting it. So it's going to be plus mgs. That's the potential. That's that term. The potential is minus mgs. Okay, so now I can just rewrite that as L equals one half m s dot squared plus I'm going to get one half times one half, which is one fourth m r squared theta dot squared plus m g s. That's my Lagrangian. Now, next, I need to get my equation f of uh, s and theta, right? My force of constraint. So, in this case, if this thing turns a little bit, and it does, and the the string's unwinding, then the displacement of the center mass would have to be equal to the amount the angles moved on the arc length. So that means that uh, r times theta would have to be s. So I can write that as r theta minus s equals zero, and that's f of s and theta. Okay, now we're ready to roll here. So I'm going to go up here. I'm not using x and y. I'm going to use s and theta. Let's start with the uh, theta term. I don't know why I picked that. So I'm going to say the partial of L with respect to theta. 
no theta, no theta, no, no theta, zero. Now I need to do this, the partial of f with respect to theta. Well, that's what's going to be r. Uh, now I need to do the partial of L with respect to theta dot. So that's going to be no theta dot. Here's the theta dot, so I get 1 half m r squared theta dot. 1 half, because the 2 comes down, I have 2 over 4, m r squared theta dot. Now I need to take the derivative of this with respect to time, and I can put it all into my Euler-Lagrange equation. I get 0 plus lambda r equals I take the derivative of this with respect to time, the only thing that changes with time is the theta dot. So I get 1 half m r squared theta double dot. Okay, let's skip to another sheet of paper and let's do s now. Let me just rewrite my, I'll put it right like this. Okay, how's that? Can you see that? Okay. So now I'm going to do the partial of l with respect to s. And so here's, I got an, that's an s dot, there's an s. So the partial of mg s with respect to s is just going to be mg. Now let's do this. The partial of f with respect to s is just going to be negative 1. Now I can take the partial of l with respect to s dot, and that that's only shows up right here, so I get uh, m s dot, because I bring the 2 down and I get s dot to the 1 power. Now I can take the derivative of that with respect to time, uh, I'll just do it right here, d, d, t equals m, s, double dot. So now if I put that all together, I get m, g minus lambda, because I have the minus 1 times lambda, equals uh, m, s, double dot. So let me put that in my other equation, um, which is right here, which is right in both. So I get lambda r equals m r squared theta double dot. And then let me rewrite this s equation. r theta equals s. It's the same thing. Okay, so now I have uh, some things here. I, I want to solve for lambda, but I have theta dot and s double dot. So I have too many things. But I can fix that, right? I can fix that by uh, taking the derivative of this equation twice. So if I take the derivative of this once, I get r theta dot equals s dot and r theta double dot equals s double dot. So here I have, I can solve for theta double dot, theta double dot equals s double dot over r and then I can plug this in up here. So now this equation is the same and this one becomes lambda r equals m r squared s double dot squared over r squared and those R's cancel. I feel like something else should have canceled. So M, S, that's M, the acceleration, and that's not. M R squared theta double dot. Oh, that's theta double dot, not dot, da ha. See? <laughs> that's not squared. So I get lambda R equals M R squared S double dot over R. So now these cancel and those cancel. So I get lambda equals m s double dot. So now I can put this in over here. So I get mg minus lambda equals lambda. Or lambda, if I add lambda to both sides, I get, oh wait, I'm missing a 1 half. I had a 1 half here somewhere. There's a 1 half right there. Yeah. Making mistakes all over the place here, huh? Okay, so that means I get theta double dot. I put that in. The S cancels. I get S double dot equals 2 lambda. So this is 2. So this would be 3 lambda equals mg, or lambda equals mg over 3. So now I can find the force. F is just going to be lambda, the F s force is going to be lambda partial of f with respect to s, which is this negative 1, so I get negative lambda. It just means it's in the opposite direction of s, and that's fine, and that is my force. And this is a force in the third of the weight. Okay, let's do the problem again. 
just to check because this is the thing we want to check. Um, let's find the same problem. I have here my yo-yo. Uh, and just so you know, as far as I understand it, yo-yos were originally a weapon. It's like a rock on a string that you can bring back to you. Uh, so here's R. And then let's just think what forces do I have acting on my yo-yo. I have the tension. I'll just write that as T. And then I have the weight, Mg. And those are vectors, really. So then if I say F net in the y direction is going to be equal to T minus Mg. And that's going to be equal to, let's call this the uh, acceleration in the negative direction. So I'll say negative May. So that's my expression. Now I also know that if I take this point of the center, then the net, the torque about that center, torque about O is going to be I alpha. Uh, because that's what torques do. And in this case, what forces exert a torque? It's just this tension. So the torque is going to be T times R equals I alpha. And then I can put in I, it's still 1 half M R squared alpha. Now, alpha is just the angular acceleration, and so again, alpha is going to be equal to the linear acceleration divided by the radius. And we know that because it's, it's rolling without slipping on the string. So if I put that in right here, I get tr equals 1 half m r squared a over r, and again, these r's all cancel, and I get t equals 1 half m a. Now up here, I can solve, oh wait. Okay, let's solve this for t. So this one becomes t equals mg minus ma, or mg minus a. I know, let's leave it like that. And if I put that in up here, I get mg minus ma equals 1 half M A. So if I multiply everything by 2, I get 2mg, and I add this to the other side, mg equals 2ma plus ma, and I get 2 thirds. A equals 3 equals 2 thirds mg, which I think is the right answer. So that means I made a mistake up here. Okay, so let's go back up here to my mistake. So one lambda is this, that's fine. I put in this and I get, let me rewrite that. Lambda equals one half S double M S double dot. I'm pretty sure that's true. So now I want to substitute in S double dot. So M S double dot equals two lambda. If I put that in up here, I get MG minus Oh, I'm putting that up here. Minus lambda equals 2 lambda. Three, uh, huh. Okay, I got that one. So maybe I made a mistake up here. So t, uh, t minus mg equals negative ma. I'm okay with that. Uh, tr equals 1 half mr squared a over r. A over, that's right. So T equals one half M A. Uh, and then I substituted, I solved this for T. I get M minus, MG minus M A. So if I add that, let's just add that to this. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, let me fix this. Okay, I just made a dumb mistake. So here I have the same thing, tr equals 1 half mr squared alpha. Uh, so I, I get alpha is a over r, and then I get t equals 1 half ma. If I solve this one for a, it just makes a little more sense. I get uh, 2t over m, I plug that in down here, I get t minus mg equals uh, negative 2t over m. Uh, so I get 3t equals mg, so I do get the same thing. Mg over 3. There you go. Fixed it.